Welcome to Pageant Planet's podcast, where we share stories and strategies to help expand and connect the global pageant community. Visit pageantplanet.com to find pageants, hire coaches, shop for dresses, and more. Now, here's your host, Stephen Roddy. Welcome, everyone, to another Pageant Planet podcast. This is the podcast for contestants who want to be inspired and discover how to win the crown. Today, Jesse Ledoux, our queen of coaching, and myself are covering the life of Sarah Rose Summers. Sarah Rose is a Nebraska beauty queen who has won the state titles of Miss Nebraska Teen USA and Miss Nebraska USA, as well as the national title of National American Miss. But let's be honest, we all know her best for being the very first woman from Nebraska to win the title of Miss USA in 2018. Her work as a child life specialist helps her to be compassionate and understanding to people she meets both inside and outside of work. With her unique and caring perspective, she has been able to travel across the United States, inspiring many. This level of competition and fame does not come without some hardships and controversies. And Sarah Rose experienced body shaming throughout her year, something she has now spoken up about that has affected her for her entire life. And she also had a bit of backlash from viewers at Miss Universe to do a misrepresented video and comments posted on Instagram, but we'll talk about that shortly. Yeah, if you think that queens in the big leagues have it easy, (laughs) think again. Like When your fans increase, so do the critics. The pageant celebs that you look up to are trying to navigate their own professional life along with the responsibility of being a title holder. And Sarah Rose has been very candid, honest, and authentic about her experience and still using her voice to spread wisdom and encouragement today. So Sarah Rose was born in Omaha, Nebraska, and grew up in, I would say Papillon, but I don't know about Nebraska. They might say Papillion, not sure. Um, But Omaha doesn't exactly scream Miss USA pageant community, but it did breed a great support system for Sarah Rose to grow up in. However, when you think about it, we've had a Miss America in Teresa Scanlon and a Miss USA from Nebraska was being Sarah Rose in the last decade, which not a lot of states can say. So don't sleep on Nebraska. Yeah. Sarah Rose, she grew up watching her mom try all kinds of diets, but then she joined a program where she learned to eat nutritious foods, foods, in healthy portions. She found a program that worked for her and she lost 75 pounds. And while Sarah was able to see her mom find success, this still impacted her mindset as a young girl when it came to eating and training when she joined the pageant world. Sarah Rose is extremely passionate about encouraging others to have a healthy relationship with both food and fitness. And throughout her post-secondary studies, so that's like um, college, um, she was working part-time as a Pilates instructor and at Lululemon. Yeah, and which is interesting because that's um, eating disorders is what Teresa Scanlon's uh, pageant platform was on. Mm. So it's like, yeah, and again, they're both from Nebraska and they go, okay, got it. Um, So it's interesting to see that the queens we see winning Miss USA and Universe grew up potentially having similar mindsets and part-time jobs that maybe you've had. And remember that where you are right now can be the training ground for where you are to be next. Like, because you could be the next Miss USA and you could be the next Miss Universe, Miss World, Miss International, or whatever pageant that you're going for. And like mm-hmm. to to kind of before we sign in our coaching moment, there's there's something that social media has I think it's kind of created that like this ideal life is just you're not really doing any type of manual labor or grunt labor and like you're absolutely rich driving around in like Ferraris, Lamborghinis or you know, Pavarazzi's taking your pictures, like fancy dinners and all that, but like really, unless you're born into a trust fund, I mean, that's that's kind of how you get your start in a lot of ways. And like when I was nine years old, I had my first 40 hour work week with my dad. We were building this deck and I was hauling lumber. And like I went to like, I was roofing houses with him because my dad had a small construction company. And even now, like when I go back home, there's still like a garage to clean. I mean, grass to mow and I, he cares zero. Right. And that's just kind of the lifestyle because I was raised in a very royal part of the world. And that's just how it is. And that's just fine. And there's nothing wrong with that. So if you are doing that now, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have success in this industry. And it doesn't mean that you're not going to potentially grow to this Instagram lifestyle, if you will. But it's not where, one, most people get their start. And two, even what you see on Instagram for the most people, like when you meet them in person, it's not how their life is day to day anyways. They're just picking and choosing what they post. Oh, definitely. And I would say that 
if you, one phrase I'm just sick of, I don't know how to say it the right way without offending everyone listening. The phrase I'm so sick of hearing, Stephen, is I'm a typical pageant, I'm not the typical pageant girl. Right. Have you heard that phrase a million oh, times or what? Oh, gosh, yeah. Almost every interview that you step yeah, into. Yeah, right. And that's the most common phrase we hear when it comes to pageant advice. It's be yourself. And then you hear, I'm not the typical pageant girl. So those paired together are just like nails on a chalkboard for me because they don't provide any value. Um, so I would just say, to, if we're going to use this as like our inspiration for how do you make yourself unique um, in order where everyone is unique, is make it organic. Like, don't feel like you have to fit into some kind of bubble or if you're busting stereotypes, like there's not one right way to do it. So use like if you are doing that part time job, you're working for your dad and you're in construction. My gosh, I bet there's some really cool trade program. So if you're not typical pageant girl because you work on construction and building, use that as your story. So find an organization that focuses on promoting trade careers for women. Oh my gosh, that would be, that would say you're not typical pageant girl without having to say it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. So use, use things like that. So if you're an athlete, maybe it's concussion protocol, maybe it's teamwork. So think about things you're already doing, like things that you're already passionate about. Maybe you love making desserts. So maybe it's making healthy desserts as your platform. So don't feel like you have to do something that's already been done. Be a trailblazer. Let your own passions shine so that those passions are what tell the story of who you are in that interview room and on the pageant stage versus you just having to say it that way. Mm, it's really good. Yeah. So Sarah's passion for child care was sparked when she was hospitalized at five years old and diagnosed with idiopathic and uh, thrombocytopenic and purpura. <laughs> so sorry if I butchered those. Very challenging. Um, but it, so it's a bloody, it's a blood clotting disorder causing excessive bleeding and bruising. And I also believe that it's like a blood circ. Well, yeah, because it's a blood clotting disorder. But I, I believe that circulation is also challenging. So you're not allowed, you're not able to sit for long periods of time because it's like your feet and your hands don't get enough circulation. I think mm. that that happens too. Because I remember talking to Renata about it. And my, uh, for those of you that don't know, my, my wife, she's a nurse practitioner. And so she's very knowledgeable as far as a lot of the stuff. But not all of it sits with me. So we could have gotten off on the side tangent, but I think that's what it, what it, ha what happens, which would be even crazier for all the travel mm -hmm. that she did as Miss USA. Yeah, definitely. And she, she saw how scared her parents were, especially her father and her nurse was amazing and inspired her to want to bring the same hope and joy to other young children and their families who may be in the same position that she was. Sarah Rose graduated cum laude from Texas Christian University in four years with two degrees in child development and strategic communication with business. After graduating, she completed her clinical rotations to become a certified child life specialist. And she enjoys seeing the faces of the children she works with light up when they are able to decorate their ivy poles as a superhero or princess character to bring them a level of comfort in a potentially uncomfortable environment. So, I mean, imagine the megawatt smiles she must have gotten from kids as she walked in um, as Miss USA, because that was probably a huge opportunity for her to be able to live that life as a title holder, which is everyone's dream. Um, but it brings me to a coaching moment. Because a lot of times contestants come to us and we do their mock interviews and they just don't connect or their, their energy level is low. Not everyone has my personality or your personality, Stephen, where we're often the loudest person in the room. And that's okay. And we need all types. And my gosh, there are some times where I'm like, man, I wish I didn't put my foot in my mouth, but I just can't help myself. Um, but I usually tell them, if you have a subdued personality or you've gotten that feedback from judges or coaches, I encourage our clients that are like that or just more introverted to role play. And I encourage them to pretend that they're talking with a group of kindergarten children. Because when you're talking to kindergartners, you need to be animated in order to keep their attention. So your facial expressions have to be a hundred times bigger. Your inflection has to go in and out. Often you talk to them more sweetly. Um, and then from there, we get them out of their shell because they usually start really shy and not really sure what to do with it. But then they start to adapt that to be that, that bright, energetic 
personality because in any interview room, you have to own the table or when you're on stage, you have to own the stage. And unfortunately, you don't have a lot of time to make that impression. Like if you get to know someone, if you're more naturally reserved and you have friendships, it probably took you a long time to build those friendships because you build trust, you communicate with them and you have a microsecond to do that in pageant world. So I love that, that practice. So role play as though you're talking to kindergartners to see if it can bring out that personality to, um, to win over the judges or whatever room you're engaging with. That's a, what a fun exercise. Oh, people hate it, Stephen. I, like, imagine <laughs> me asking an introvert to do that. They're just like, oh my gosh, like, are you going to judge me? I'm like, no, I, well, I'm here to help. Like, so let's get through it together. Right. Um, and then they, uh, you know what? I, I get it. Yeah. So it takes a lot of practice. <laughs> Oh, too bad we don't record it. <laughs> maybe, well, uh, yeah, I was like, maybe I will, but I know I, if I were a contestant, I don't think I'd want that. No, on the no, absolutely not. So um, rewind back to 2005. Sarah Rose joined her first pageant at the age of 10, and she joined the National American Miss Pageant. And then after four years of competing, she won the title of Miss Nebraska Junior Teen 2009. And she went on to be crowned the 2009-2010 NAM Junior Teen National Title Holder. And for those of you that don't know, you're outside the United States, but NAM holds, uh, which stands for National American Miss, holds one of the most competitive and prestigious pageants in the USA. But this was just the beginning for Sarah Rose. And I got to, to meet Sarah Rose and her family at National American Miss this past November. And she was the light of the room in every single space she was in. Contestants would line up to take selfies with her and talk with her. It was a really big inspiration, I think. Well, I know for those contestants to be able to see someone that had the dream that they're currently going after. And then long term, the one of the biggest dreams for USA pageant girls period. Mm. So that was really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, but then um, after a few years, she competed in her first Teen USA state pageant in 2011, which also had a swimsuit competition. She was a junior high school, junior high school student and won Miss Nebraska Teen USA 2012 and the swimsuit competition. And for the first time in her life, she began a quote unquote diet. She was on the dance team and joined a gym and wanted to do everything in her control to prepare and compete at Miss Teen USA. While preparing for Miss Teen USA, she had a sponsor who provided her workout plans and a strict diet that wasn't tailored to her eating patterns. Um, and at 16 years old, she learned about limiting, dieting, and restricting eating habits versus flexibility or substituting. Mm. And Sarah Rose planned on graduating a year early from school to fulfill the role of Miss Teen USA. Unfortunately, she did not win and she did not place at the national competition. And this was the first time she experienced this level of disappointment and loss. And as a result, she reverted back to her previous eating habits, which changed the way her body looked. But with the support of her caring mother, she was able to have a realization about the way she was treating her body and regained control. And a mini coaching moment here Loss should always come with self-reflection, but be cautious of being too critical of yourself. So if you don't win your dream title, go back and reevaluate what, what maybe didn't work, what contributed to maybe you not maximizing your points. But it's really easy to get into this really dark hole and eliminate all of the good progress you made to advance yourself as a person. We always talk about pageantry makes you the best version of yourself in just about every aspect of life. So to lose that dream title you were working so hard to get, it's really easy to lose sight of all of that and start at square one again. So just be cautious of what that loss can do and make it a learning experience um, versus something negative. Yeah, discipline is a muscle. And it's why mm -hmm. you're, you're trying to eat well. I mean, you always start off good in, in the morning. But towards depending on how stressful your day is, towards the end of that day, you're like, whatever, I'm going to have a cookie or whatever, let's order pizza or what. Story of my life. Yeah. So it's like, but it's it's a muscle, just like patience is a muscle. It's why you typically lose your patience more like um, in the evening where, where you, your temper flares up because all of that, those micro stresses, and in this case, a big level of disappointment can come up. So like if you do get derailed, this is where it's so great to have a coach, to have that support family in your corner who can cheer you along. And if you don't have the support family, like that's why you really need a coach even more because they can speak life into you and where you're going and not where you currently are. Mm -hmm. 
A few years later, Sarah Rose wanted to take her pageant experience to the next level by competing at Miss Nebraska USA. And while she did not win this year, she did make sure that she was focused on living a balanced social, personal, um, school, and fitness lifestyle, which meant more to her than actually winning or even her second runner-up placement. So in 2018, Sarah Rose went back to the Miss Nebraska USA stage with her heart set on representing Nebraska at Miss USA. And at this point in her life, she met her future husband, Connor, found workouts she loved by John Benton Model Fitness, and was completing clinicals for her child life internship. You could say everything was in alignment. She won the title of Miss Nebraska 2018 against seven other women and faced an uphill battle of being the first woman to win the title of Miss USA from her state. Sarah Rose was able to keep this balanced mindset and clear headspace throughout the competition, which was held in... Shearport, um, Louisiana, and she strutted her way into the semifinals and rocked a blue and white bikini during s- swimsuit. And she nailed the evening gown segment with a sparkly or with a black sparkly gown with a large black skirt. And side note, Sarah Rose wore her hair straight, which I feel paved the way for other contestants in the U.S. to embrace the style more. Latina contestants at Miss Universe have been going this route for a long time. But for some reason, contestants in the States have been hesitant to deviate from traditional pageant curls. So as soon as Sarah Rose won with straight hair, it was almost like, okay, I can do this too. So we've seen variation in hairstyles and pageantry since Sarah Rose. And I credit her with that completely. Mm, Yeah, I love the straight hair that that Sarah wore, Sarah Rose. And then also like when it's really slick in the ponytail, which I've mentioned Mm. a lot. (laughs) Your favorite. (laughs) My favorite. When making it to the final three, she didn't hold back on her answer. She was asked, what she would put on a blank sign at a march and this is what she said she said i say it would say speak your voice i don't know what march that we're on our way to in this hypothetical situation but no matter where you're going whatever type of march it is you're obviously on your way to that march because you care about what that cause so go speak to the people when they have questions, communicate with them, listen to their views also. That is one thing in the United States that we really need to focus on is listening to each other, which is more true now than it's ever been. Mm-hmm. And Sarah Rose's dream came true as she won the title of Miss USA 2018, the first woman from Nebraska to win the title. And she states that moving to New York and her time as Miss USA was enhanced by her wonderful system from family, friends, and the Miss Universe organization. A lot of her years as Miss USA revolved. Um, a lot of her year as Miss USA revolved around visiting children in hospitals and supporting the families at bedside. And this was a big focus of hers, as she was able to see the children's faces light up when they saw the sparkly crown and the beautiful princess come and visit them. Mm-hmm. And Sarah Rose got to represent the USA at Miss Universe in Bangkok, Thailand, a highlight of any Miss USA's year. But as mentioned before, it wasn't all glitz and glamour and smooth sailing. She received backlash and criticism over an Instagram story intended to admire a few of her sisters. It was perceived as disrespectful and made headlines worldwide. Um, But this didn't stop her from using her voice to take social media and genuinely apologize for the misunderstanding. Yeah, that's one of the hardest parts about the social media age. I mean, people jump to conclusions about who you are based on their interpretation of your 2D presence and they can they they can take exactly what you said and then they Mm -hmm. can change it and spin it and say you know and then when they explain it from their perspective of what you said you're like okay yeah i could see that yet for those of who knew sarah rose was like but she would never mean that right you know yeah i can see how you took that but if you knew her as a being as a human you would just never put those two things together especially Mm -hmm. as you are hearing about the podcast hearing more about her life in the podcast now. Mm-hmm. So just because those may think something about you, it doesn't change your identity and it may have the ability to chip away at maybe your confidence in the moment, but it doesn't change your identity. And also like, wait, like think about Sarah Rose and like how much she grew, right? Because she mm-hmm. didn't immediately collapse under the pressure. And so it's right. almost like when she lost the Miss Teen USA or she didn't, place as high as what she wanted to right like she went into that darker place of like resorting back to food but when this happened and a lot more public of a you know failure if you will it didn't impact her the same way which shows just how much she grew 
as a human. And that's like what this whole game is all about. And I mean, I saw it firsthand. There are not a lot of people in the world where people will wait in line to meet. And then the whole time that they're meeting, they're being uplifted by that person that they waited to meet. And I, I truly did see it firsthand. Contestants would just walk away so excited and honored to meet Sarah Rose and just hearing what she would say to them. And she also was part of our celeb sesh program with, we had several Miss USA and Miss America title holders doing mock interviews with our pageant community. And I know how valuable it was for them. So she hasn't take, let, allowed that um, one experience to change who, who she is and who she projects at all. So definitely admirable. And that's, that's who she is. So if you, if you know that about Sarah Rose, um, that she's warm and encouraging and kind, I mean, that's who she is. So anyway, on a brighter note, her national costume was personal to her country and to her name. She wore a red sparkly red ball gown made of red roses and had one large rose headpiece. Um, and that, of course, represents her name, Sarah Rose. And she placed in the top 20 and got to watch her soon-to-be roommate, Catriona Gray from the Philippines, be crowned. Sarah Rose looks at her time as Miss USA and at Miss Universe as some of the most special times of her life, all the ups and the downs included. Shortly after, and we mean shortly, the Miss Universe uh, 2018 pageant was completed. Sarah Rose got engaged to her now husband, Connor Combs, while in Thailand. I don't, I can't confirm, but I'm pretty sure it was like at the after party of the pageant that she got engaged. So it was like right after. So either way, she was coming home with the next step of her life. And while the focus of Sarah Rose's career was childcare, she became a huge public advocate for body positivity. And after walking for Sherry Hill in New York Fashion Week, a lifelong dream of hers, she received hundreds of comments body shaming her. And while this shocked her, she knew that she had her support system as a cornerstone to keep her standing. Yeah, keep in mind, just because someone has like 250,000 followers, you know, they're still human. They still read their comments like, come on. And really, you don't want to put that out there because you will reap what you sow. So really be mm -hmm. careful what you talk to people, because like, honestly, that stuff will come back one way or the other. And it always comes back. So when you're like alarmed, gosh, this person was so rude to me. Why? Like, think back to maybe some, some of those comments. Mm -hmm. And it's not always a direct correlation like that. But gosh, it's just a law of reciprocity. So just. I mean, be, be careful. And like, if you were one of those people that like commented and you're listening to podcasts, like find a few other posts that of Sarah Rose and Instagram and like, give her some love, like comment, like tell her how beautiful she is or compliment something else about her. Like, to again to like neutralize it you know so i thought you were gonna say go find a hobby which i thought would have been an, an equally oh <laughs> good advice <laughs> equal piece of good advice <laughs> okay well yeah go find a hobby too um so unless you're <laughs> never mind okay she knew that um that this meant that she had to speak up on this matter as no woman, young or old, should have to face that sort of criticism in 2019. So she could be found hosting events, writing for her blog and podcast, and in cute workout gear, taking part in dance and cycling classes. She shares the ins and outs of her life to her almost 240,000 followers on Instagram. Her blog is So Sarah Rose, uh, Beauty Inside and Out, and she shares details about beauty, fitness, and lifestyle tips. And what's a beauty blogger without a YouTube channel? If you want to know how to get hair and makeup like a Miss USA, you should subscribe to her channel, Sarah Rose Summers. To complete this influencer trio, Sarah Rose started her own podcast to interview other amazing influential people in her life to provide words of wisdom to, wis to listeners. Her podcast, More Than a Crown, can be found on Apple Podcasts. And you'll get to hear the real life advice from former and current title holders like Miss America 2017, Savvy Shields, Miss USA 2019, Chesley Christ, Miss USA 2009, Kristen Dalton, all people that we love. Um, and hearing these women converse together about pageants in their daily lives just reminds you how normal and human they really are. Yeah, and just like the blank sign in the march, Sarah Rose utilizes her many platforms on social media to continue speaking her voice on matters and causes that are important to her and to other women around the world. The title of Miss USA may sit on another queen's head, but the legacy of impact that Sarah Rose Summers has on her audience will remain for many decades to come. Yeah, Sarah Rose 
Colm, Sarah Rose Summers hyphen Colm, uh, married her sweetheart with some of her pageant sisters at her side. The two enjoyed living in New York for the start of their relationship, but due to the good old pandemic, um, have temporarily relocated to Nebraska. She is still doing what she can sp- what she can to speak her voice from the comfort of her own home, including hosting virtual galas and recording podcasts. She uses her platform to encourage her followers to run the day so it doesn't run you. It's a daily reminder that we should be extra grateful for the precious things in life that we may have been taking advantage of before the pandemic. She is still close with her Miss USA sisters as they all participated in the hashtag Pash the Brush video campaign on Instagram. It's hard to believe that at the recording of this podcast, more than 12 months has went by since Sarah Rose was Miss USA, but we all know time flies and seems to go faster each and every year. Mm -hmm. And in Sarah Rose Summer's own words, my biggest advice for others seeking a healthier lifestyle or to lose weight is to find what healthy foods you truly like, plan portions, and mix in some super fun workouts. Your journey will not be the same as mine, but I hope this message can be an encouragement to you that it is not easy for everyone, no matter how picture perfect bodies may appear on our Instagram Explorer pages. And if you would like to be a featured contestant for our next podcast, create a contestant profile with all of your information, hidden facts, and what makes you special. Then email support at Pageant Planet so we can review your profile and we will let you know after you submit if you're scheduled. Also, a special shout out to Maria Giorlando for doing the research and a really fun fact, I guess. Um, If you have an Alexa, you can say, um, hey, Alexa, play Pageant Planet's podcast and they will play our newest episode. So our latest episode. So you can do it while you're washing the dishes or if you're in the living room cleaning about and you can just ask Alexa and she will play it. So thank you for listening. And if you've received any benefit from this show or for ones previous, please consider giving us a five star review. It might seem like a small action, but it really does help us to keep the show going going. So until next time, take care. Want to become a part of pageant history? Create a free contestant or business profile on pageantplanet.com to unlock hidden features and connect with other experts throughout the world.